Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and here we talk about all things cloud. Now, thank you for joining today. We have got another episode of Tales from the Real World here, and I am delighted to bring in another Welshman for a start. Got to start with that one, the important piece, but also another content creator and someone who's been on their own cloud journey as well over the recent year and uh, beyond. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring John onto the show here. Hello, John. How are we doing? Borodar, Chris. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. Very well. And uh, Borodar, I guess we're not morning, but Shemai, Noswetha, whatever we are. Look, Chris, that's, that's the limit of my Welsh, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. Excellent. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. You had me confused for a minute, so that's a great way to start into the show. I wasn't expecting the Welsh, so there we go. I thought we need we need we this, need more Welsh spoken content out there, don't we? So true. you know maybe that needs to be a segment <laughs> on the channel, a completely Welsh spoken uh clouds channel. Oh, I'm not sure I have uh... I I'd watch I'd watch it. I'd watch it. I wouldn't be involved in that. I was gonna say right. I'm not sure I'm brave enough to try it out yet, but maybe one day <laughs> we'll get to it. Uh, so um absolutely i guess what worth uh for the folks listening in here i'm sure many listening in probably know you already but uh for those who may not follow your channel or may have heard your name and uh, not quite matched up yet let's start with some intros yeah yeah sure thing so yeah firstly chris thanks for having me on it's obviously it's a pleasure to come on and say hello to you again so uh thanks for that but yeah so my name's John Len. I go by the uh, Twitter handle Johnny Chips. Um, I'm I'm a little bit active in the community at the minute in in the world of of Azure and cloud computing. Um, I work for BT Enterprise in the UK, so I'm a technical architect. So I generally spend a lot of my time on Teams calls, <laughs> speaking to customers and clients, and trying to architect solutions together. And Sometimes that sounds glamorous. Uh, a lot of the time, it's it's working your way through the meandering red tape and pol uh, politics in business and trying to work out, you know, how we can get a particular end goal for a particular business requirement or business outcome that's, that, that people may think they need. So, yeah, I, I mean, I've been working at BT now probably just over eight years or so now. Um, predominantly the last sort of three to four years, I would say, I've been mainly focused on Azure, really the last three years I've really put my foot down on the gas if you like with cloud compute prior to that um, I was very much on the M365 side of the fence I was very much a unified comms and messaging sort of uh, uh, consultant and architect so um, yeah I took the plunge over to the dark side I suppose and thought I'd want to get back to my um, infra roots I guess um, and, and and delve into into Azure as a cloud platform so yeah, that's a bit about me. Excellent. Good stuff. And before we dive into the cloud side, I want to make sure we give a bit of a shout out as well. I've got up on screen here your uh, your own website. So maybe give a bit of a update, shout out on what you kind of do there and your YouTube channel as well. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So yeah, I, I well, I don't know about you, Chris, but for years, I mean, if you've worked in the IT or the tech industry for any length of time, you probably known about this thing called community and it's been around and you know we've all been there in days gone by i think certainly today um the access to information is far far greater than it was a decade ago you know i think a decade a decade ago if you wanted to learn something it was those community folk that would spend the time and put the, their their information their knowledge out into the community or it would be you know a channel line video or you'd be lucky enough to go to one of the in-person events and you'd be you know scribbling notes down and i think over the years, I've always wanted to dip my toe into this thing called community. I never really understood what it was about or why or how. So I've had a blog. I think if you go right the way back down to my first post, it's probably from something like 20, 2015, 2016. It's, it's a good five or six years mm. ago. And it was all good intentions that I was going to start a blog up. And I kind of stop, start, stop, start. And, you know, it was only really over, you know, this lockdown situation that we've all found ourselves in over the last um you know 14 15 months or so now that i thought right now's my chance i'm not out on the road you know sort of three four days a week you know i you know i've got time with my family i've got all of that time that i'd be sat in a car or a motorway to actually start well maybe i can try and put a little bit back you know i'm, I'm not i'm not any great you know intelligent guy or i've i've not you know got got oodles of things to say as such but 
you know, I've I've certainly got experience. I've been doing this kind of job and this role for a number of years now in not just the techie side, but the business side as well. So I thought, right, I'm going to actively try and make a bit of a start. And um, I mean, that's that's what I did. So, so I kind of I think my first post back last July, August time was something along the lines of another two years has gone by without a blog <laughs> post. And I kind of just put my thoughts and feelings as to why that was. And I can't remember what I said now. But from that point, I thought, no, I'm going to make it a regular thing and see if I can get into this kind of routine of of literally just blogging about the stuff I'm learning about about or reading about or those little things that you do and you fix and you think, oh, I'm going to put that up there because I might need to, you know, I've got one note, one note full of you know, PowerShell scripts and snippings and things I fixed all by customers. And I think I should probably go through a bit of that. I, I haven't, as it happens. I haven't gone back to <laughs> that and sort of retrospectively written blog articles, but I probably should. So yeah, I thought I'll I'll kind of try and get the blog back up and running, and and that kind of like one thing led to another. Um, and I think back back around about August time, um, I was watching one of Scott Hanselman's um, videos, one of his Azure Friday videos, and GPS, you know, Gwyneth Pena Segunza, uh, she was on talking about this thing called a hundred days of cloud. Um, and at the time, it was it was a case of, mm, OK, that sounds interesting. Um, you know, what is it? So I looked into it and, and really it's just just about setting yourselves that goal of of kind of, you know, being a bit committed, maybe being a little bit over the top with it just to kind of really take that momentum of everything you're doing and, and kind of exaggerate it so that it really sticks in and kind of pushes out to the community to kind of hopefully it kind of inspires and motivates other people to think, ah, maybe I can do a little bit of that. So I saw that video with GPS and Scott Anselm and I thought, that's it. That's what I want to do. That's going to kind of kickstart me um, into this world of, <coughs> Chris, I don't know about you, but it's probably fair to say that if, if people like me, you kind of get not so much stuck in a rut with your day job, but you kind of get to a point where you're going through the motions. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you clock in at nine o'clock, you do your bit, you go home, see the family, have some food. And, and there's no shame in that. Yeah, that that is generally what work is like. And I guess I, it's, it's probably fair to say I, I lost a little bit of the edge of the passion. Mm -hmm. It was there, but there was no real structure to it. And I thought, right, I'm going to use that 100 Days of Cloud Challenge to kind of reinvigorate that passion sure. um, for learning and, you know, get there and, and do something with technology. So. That's basically what I started out with, you know, sort of back last August. And and it's got to this point now where, you know, I'm doing similar videos to this with great people across the community and technical experts in their fields, you know, having chats with them, putting them up on YouTube. And yeah, before you know it, <laughs> you do that for a few months and you've got this huge catalogue of, you know, really cool kind of conversation and, and great, in, you know, information from these people. So, yeah, that's kind of where it's led me. Chris. Absolutely. No, great. Thank you for that. <laughs> There's so much in there that you said, I'm trying to unpack and figure out where we kind of take it. But a lot really resonated with me. Like the first thing that you um, that you mentioned in there was about the blog. You started it five years ago. Then you did a blog post. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm back kind of thing. And I, yeah. I, I need to go and look because I'm. 99% sure I did a similar thing with mine because what the way my journey started was um, started very similarly probably probably about five or six years ago actually put a blog post up yeah. failed attempt tried again failed attempt couldn't get into it just like you were mentioning and um, it was actually the beginning of last year before the kind of lockdown and pandemic started where I was like right I'm going to start doing some podcasting and that's where I kind of got the cloud with Chris mm. brand from um, then did the YouTubing side and then brought the blogging of the existing stuff that I had and thought, actually, this can be a platform for all types of content, not just the kind of mm. audio and video. So that definitely resonated. And we were both on a session probably, what, six to eight weeks ago, actually, where we talked about the fact everyone has a story to give back to the community. And I think that was one of the other things. You're, you're underselling yourself is firstly yeah. what I would say um, from what, what you said in there. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but um i think there's everyone has a story to tell right you know I, there are certain things i talk about on the devops side and the github side and whatnot uh you know there's a lot of stuff you've been doing on the iot side i know that's a passion area maybe we can come on to later as well yeah and um, ultimately every every one of us has a story to tell we've got perspectives and i really like what you said there you know you've 
we might all go through the motions. We might be there in terms of the job is kind of sucking energy rather than giving that energy. And I agree with you. For mm. me, this contributing back into the community, being able to tell our story of how we kind of have learned something, have found an interesting problem to solve, whatever it is, we've got a perspective and a story to tell. And most of the time, I'm not necessarily writing it for others, though it's kind of helpful to, if other people are able to use that and learn from it, awesome, that's an added bonus. But sometimes for me, it's just a case of, I know I'm going to need to do that thing again in the future. Let me go and put yeah. that in the no, catalog exactly. and uh, yeah. have it there. And it might be useful for other people. So, so much of what you said made complete sense there. And uh, it, it was a strange time. It was It was a strange time because for those that know me, professionally in my working environment will know I'm one of the I, I am a, a relatively passionate person when it comes to tech I like shiny new yeah. things and I like to try and get the best out of you know whatever it is I like to try and stick things together a lot and see what we can do and, and kind of solve business problems yeah. you know that, that's what my job is I guess to a point and I think like I say for those that know me professionally they'll, they'll know and they'll probably laugh they'll know that you know I can talk a glass eye to sleep <laughs> you know I'll, I'll I'll go I'll go I'll go rattling on about anything and everything and and i and i like to find you know i found it a really strange position where all of a sudden we're, we're kind of in this environment where wow you know there's so much to learn there is literally so much that you could learn and so many different directions that you could take it and if i'm being honest for me you know i've worked in, in the it industry now what probably 20 years i guess something like that um it's, it, there's never been a time like this, you know, in all the different iterations of, you know, we, we went from, you know, mainframe into PC and desktop computers into virtualization and, you know, new storage capabilities, new networking, you know, from Ethernet to fiber to well, from token ring. Even I, I was around in, in those days as well. But you go through that and yeah, these are just kind of small step changes. Cloud has come along and gone boom. Right, there we go. All the rules are gone. <laughs> do you we'll tear them up and uh, yeah. we'll try something new. Absolutely. And and this was it. So so I'm guessing, again, I'm no different to a lot of other people in this position, but you see this and you think, wow. So I can either stay as I am, which, again, there's no shame in that. There's plenty of work to do the traditional IT on-prem. There'll be a lot of that work around for, for, for decades to come, I'm I'm absolutely sure. Or... You can look to this thing, this new technology thing. I say it's new, Christ. You know, cloud has been around a, a long, long time mm. now. But the point is, I suppose it's new in the business sense to a certain extent. You know, you 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 move all your software as a service. You know, obviously things like um, Mindcast and obviously BPOS mm -hmm. with with mail migrations were kind of the, the first killer apps, I guess, yep. that kind of hooked us into these cloud platforms and. We had a good few years of that, and and obviously AWS with you know, the the amount of big business using AWS and putting all their their kind of infra and applications on there. And when I say new, I think certainly over the last few years, this is the new bit that businesses now are unable to kind uh, kind of uh, use the cloud to truly differentiate themselves mm. in their own industry. And there's never been another time like this, and it's kind of happening now. We're learning, we're seeing all these new technologies, and. So for me, why I started on that journey was was really to kind of, you know, grab that bull by the horns and go, right, I'm not going to know everything, but I want to know a little bit about as much as I possibly can <laughs> yep. so that when I am sat there, you know, I've got my own little areas that I deal with as my SME, if you like. <clears throat> but then when I am sat there speaking with customers, I can at least help join some of those dots together with customers and say, well, OK, what about thinking about this or what about that? And that's what it turned into and and this whole thing that i've kind of got involved with like like yourself chris the community side is it, i i find it phenomenal that i and i just so, so wish i got involved sort of 20 years ago when i started and in fact that's that's advice i'm giving to graduates coming into the company i work for at the moment where i'm kind of acting in a little bit of a mentorship capacity is get involved because you you know what you put in you get back tenfold is my experience so far so Anyway, yeah. So that that's that's the fine the, the funny world of John at the moment. What goes on in my mind is just lots of random things flashing around. I guess. Oh, absolutely, and I cannot agree more with what you just said about how much you get back, uh, you know, versus what you put in, right? And it's an awesome community. It's great mm -hmm. to be a part of it. And like you, I wish, I wish I started on it sooner. Those failed attempts of blogging. Mm -hmm. No one needs. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree with this, but no one needs to feel like. 
oh, I just can't get started with blogging. It's never going to happen. It will at some point. It's just maybe that's not the right mm-hmm. time or you just need to try something new and make it work for you. And I think um, really one of the key messages we had from that session that we did previously is you need to do it for for yourself you know it doesn't necessarily need Mm -hmm. to be to please others or to get however many subscribers or viewers or whatever it is it's purely about what brings you that joy and that satisfaction and you know i think both of us have kind of commented on the fact that it really brings us a lot of energy in terms of being able to do some of this stuff so couldn't agree more could not agree more it's just cool isn't it it's cool that you can literally you know drop drop somebody a quick dm on twitter Look, I've seen what you do on Twitter. I think you're really great at what you're doing. Any chance you can come mm-hmm. on, I'm going to record it. We'll have a chat. The amount of people now, I, I think I tweeted about it the other day. I'm hitting the, the six-month mark now with the the In Conversation awesome. With series. So I'm at around about 25, 26 videos. And the amount of cool, intelligent, you know, insightful people, including yourself, Chris, you've been on one of those episodes. And, and I watch the stuff that you put back out into the community. It's just all of a sudden you've gone from this person to say, okay, I'm going to go and watch a plural site course, or I'm going to go and do this course. And what I said to people is, <laughs> I'll I'll also watch those courses. But, you know, I'm actually speaking to those people yes. on Twitter as well. You, you can actually reach out and talk to them. They're, you know, normal human beings like me and you, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and, and that's the bit that's kind of a little bit mind blowing in a way. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just, all of a sudden, you see, you know, you, you look at all the, you know, there's there's so many great um, people that have done things like plural site courses, and and certainly I've looked up to over the years. All of a sudden, we're having a little bit of banter mm-hmm. on Twitter over something ridiculous, and you think, okay, so so it is pretty accessible. Yeah. And so why didn't I do this before? You know, and to echo what you said there, right? And this isn't a humble brag or anything, as I say this, but I never ever thought I would see the day that. I'm on the same lineup for an event as Scott Hanselman. I never, ever mm. thought that would be the case. Um, and I think it was one of the Azure user groups, actually, the Northern Azure user group he was speaking at, and I was invited to speak along the same one. So to, <laughs> to have that as something pretty I could cool, say, right, is, is, is cool. awesome. Yeah. And maybe that's a nice segue, actually, the Azure user groups, because we've been focusing on mm. kind of the platforms we run there, but we're both uh, meetup group organizers as well. So you've got a very successful uh, Azure user group that uh, that you're associated with. It, it's going well yeah and, and in fairness it's a team effort i mean there's uh seven of us that kind of co-organize that that group i i think it's probably fair to say i'm i'm probably seen as the face of it more than more, more than the other guys that help organize it but i mean that's probably because i'm just obnoxious and on twitter and linkedin and posting <laughs> silly random pictures of me you know doing something stupid with iot but it's going really well and and that kind of came to be off the back of um it was it was an existing user group that was run in cardiff um and it kind of went through a few changes it was a exactly power <laughs> to cardiff it went through, i think it started off if i'm not mistaken it was like a data like a sql type user group and then it morphed to become like a more generalist microsoft stack type user group in fact that's the meetup name is still msft I stack i did notice that um, yeah, and gotcha. then yeah, and and it was it was basically um, a, a few people in in the industry, obviously, and 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 um, volunteers were setting that up, and and I think like anything, it went a little bit, you know, sort yeah. of COVID hit, nobody really picked it up and took anything on, and at the time, again, this was around June, July, about mm. a year ago now, um, when I was looking to do the more with the community, I thought, right, there's nothing, there's nothing. I don't know about you, Chris, but there's absolutely nothing that. I, you know, literally, I could count on, on one hand the number of companies I work with in, in Wales and user groups. Yeah, I've been to a few, but they're, they're, they're not as prevalent yeah. as across England. Even Scotland have got, you know, loads of things going on up there and even in Ireland as well. So I thought, right, I want to start my own user group up. So I actually put a thing out on LinkedIn saying, thinking about starting a user group up, I picked a really obnoxious, obnoxiously long acronym for the user group because I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> you know, not just completely. You know, it was something like whatever it was. I can't even remember yeah. now. But um, within a day or two, I'd had a message then from Anna McNally oh. at Microsoft, one of the CSAs. Yeah. She reached out and said, hi, John, I can see you're in Wales. I can see you're looking to, you know, form a user group. Do you want to come along um, and meet some of the other guys and girls that are looking to do something with this existing user group? It's like, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Sign me up. So. With that, I met the the rest of the guys. So you've got Matt Fatonka and Anna McNally uh, and Ahmed Lajem from Microsoft. They're all CSAs in Microsoft. And then there's a few of us 
if you like in the local area so we've got uh, richard griffiths at confuse.com we got a bull uh, he works at clearbank and um, george is at the ipo and of course me from bt and and it's it's brilliant i mean we were lucky enough to get sponsored pretty much you know instantaneously by des uh, mcguire who who um, runs servant up here, up north uh, and des sponsors a few of the user groups and and you know for people that don't know how they're put together. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's about organization and getting some great people into to speak and running quizzes and having some prizes. But Des was straight in, straight on board with us straight away. He was, you know, and he's been, you know, really helpful. And then within a month or so, we had um, Admiral. I think the idea was we wanted to try and put a platform, you know, for local Welsh business um, to kind of demonstrate the kind of things that they were doing through digital transformation. And Straight away, Admiral, you know, being a, a Cardiff headquartered organization and a big insurance company, you know, nationally. Um, don't know if they're glow, if they if they branch out, I'm sure they've got something internationally as well. But they were on board and, and straight away it was like, wow, hang on a second. Within the, the, the space of like two or three weeks, I gone from putting a LinkedIn post out there just looking for something to now I'm part of seven people with two sponsors setting up some virtual meets. Mm-hmm. And you think okay um right what should we do then and it's been good fun because i mean there's you know we've we've had scott hanselman on uh one of the uh, one of the events back in february we had abel wang and april edwards back um before christmas and they i just find it so much not so much about the technical knowledge that you you get from those things but i just like things like that to be yeah. fun because anything i try and do i try and do things a little bit tongue-in-cheek and a little bit risky I, I don't think you've seen the best of me on that one yet, and maybe <laughs> i need to tone it down but i, I like to have a bit of fun yeah. with things you know it's, it's just about look, we, we've all got to learn this stuff or, or we feel we need to learn it there's, there's no point trying to force yourself to learn this stuff if you're not feeling mm. it you've got to you've got to enjoy Sorry. it so the user group has been so successful in not just the brilliant speakers again chris you've spoken at the user group as well but we've had so many great people from the community that we both know they've spoken at the group um and it's just that that networking piece. Yes, you're learning and you're hearing some great content and great insights from people. You're speaking to some really clever people in Microsoft, giving us deep dive information about new Microsoft products and feature sets. But you're also making friends. And, you know, you're able to kind of just have that little bit of banter and that little bit of a, you know, tongue in cheek joke or something like that on, on Twitter, which, you know, that's that's community and yeah. that that's what it is for me it's just the, the, that the whole package so yeah it's been really good fun doing that and yeah long may it continue i think we're uh we're yet to see how we're gonna work uh from a face-to-face that's the next mm. big uh challenge to see how we uh we, we work that one out but yeah it's, it's going well it's going well thanks chris and it's, it's enjoyable good. and couldn't agree more again on the um the community and almost the friends kind of aspect of it it's there's so many people I would never have met if I hadn't got involved. And I'm sure I've heard you say the same as well um, in other talks. So great community. And I think the real message we're saying there to anyone is you don't have to organize. You don't have to regularly post, but definitely at least get involved. Show your face because you don't realize yeah. what you're missing out on until you uh, start tipping your toe in the water there. No, absolutely. And stay for the quizzes, if nothing else, <laughs> you know, because quiz prizes are great. Absolutely. You know, I, I wouldn't mind being involved in winning some of them myself. But uh, yeah, and it's good fun, isn't it? So yeah, all good there. Excellent. So let's shift away then a little bit from the community side, because we've um, focused on that one a little bit here. Um, let's talk more about your cloud journey. And there was something in there you mentioned about uh, going back to your roots from an infrastructure perspective after you'd kind of done the unified comms piece for a while. So how did you find that shift? going from that unified comm space back into infrastructure and starting this kind of cloud thing you mentioned you know it can be quite overwhelming there's so many different areas mm-hmm. how do you approach that because i guess that's one of the first things i hear people ask is there's so much where do i start yeah so i mean to set the scene a little bit i think i first started putting stuff in azure when it was in the classic model yep. so before all, all the arm came out and the things that I was putting in Azure were, you know, things like hybrid servers, messaging servers, SMTP relays, just to try and be a little bit different at the time. And I'm probably talking, what would that be? Seven, eight years, seven years ago, eight years ago, something like that, you know, maybe a little bit longer. But 
we were putting stuff in there and, and you know it's one of those things where you think is is this azure thing gonna gonna catch on you know because at that point it was probably you know a few years and old it was windows and, azure yeah, we at that point as well windows azure back then it may yeah in fact it probably mm. was and and because i started with with 365 just as it transitioned into 365 from BPOS. from BPOS. yeah so so i was kind of learning all that unified comms and messaging bit and this thing called Azure was was kind of mm. there, and you know we we knew that AWS was doing lots of things with big business, you know, and 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 they were hosting. We thought ah, it's a data center, and in fairness, it's probably fair to say it was like your traditional data center back then, because you know it it hadn't grown to what it's become now. So I was kind of at the time it was a case of either you know you know Chris, it's either put in you know a virtual machine or even some physical tin on site in a data center in a customer's cupboard wherever it may be and we were setting up some servers you know networking storage cable it up get the application installed and away to go and slowly but surely there was this kind of started to see this shift um where one or two customers say oh i, I don't want to host it there can we get some prices to, to host it in azure and we were like mm, okay i'll take a look at this thing called azure now then and it was then that we started doing only small things, really, just setting up. Um, I, I can't even remember what were they VNets back then. I can't even remember. They, they were, they VNets. were yeah. But um, you yeah. had you had VNet affinity, didn't you? And you also had loads of other kind That's of right, concepts. Yeah. You didn't have tags or any it was of all that. Through that, that, that <sighs> funny little portal. Yeah, didn't With even the, have resource groups. Was, no, did you? You had to go and individually look right, to yeah. your resources. Um, I think even virtual machines didn't come first. I think it was like. They cloud services yeah. first and then virtual machines came later so yeah it was uh interesting yeah, yeah. times yeah that. yeah so but, but that's what i mean so it was just picking those little bits and over time you know if you like it kind of built up over a few years that we were doing more and more and more then we we saw this arm this you know resource manager different flavor the blade system i can't remember the code name Ibiza. of it now you remember the code that's it i beat that this blade thing is like oh that looks quite snazzy let's look at that a little bit and then it was all a case of <laughs> some customers were saying well look we want to move what we've got there now in the, the classic model over into this um new sort of arm based version of azure so i got involved doing that and i thought and i was only doing the unified comms bit so at the time it was like we were putting mail relay servers predominantly a couple of domain controllers bit of networking um i wasn't really using stuff like storage accounts even for because i think at the time you know they weren't as comprehensive or flexible as they certainly are today so it was literally spinning up vms more or yeah. less with a bit of networking and then as time progressed obviously you know that the whole thing started to become more and more and more and that was when you know my eye kind of stayed there because it was like hang on a second microsoft are transforming this all of a sudden now we started to see some of the platform as a services offering started to appear and things like you know azure ad using azure ad and ad connect to do that sync from on-prem predominantly to 365 but hang on i can view all of those user accounts now in azure ad through this new um you know as azure portal well hang on a sec i can do a few different things in there i can and i thought okay it's microsoft are doing their usual trick I think I said this on a video before, but Microsoft are renowned, in my opinion, anyway. They released that version 1.0 that everybody goes, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, yep. good. And people kind of take their eye off the ball. The next thing you know, you look at it, and it's this massive, it's all singing, all dancing product that, uh, you know, and uh, so I kind of saw that, you know, from my own viewpoint, my own experiences, I looked at the Azure portal and what it was becoming and thought, mm, okay, there's there's more to this cloud thing than maybe i'm realizing and that was a good few years ago and like i say it's only really been probably the last three or four years that i've taken it seriously so i kind of missed out on getting the deep dive knowledge for those first sort of early five six years of time sure. you know of, of, of time where i was kind of just using it to, to service my unified comms projects if that makes sense um so yeah it was so i, I, I back to your point chris i think for me i kind of dipped my toe mm. in for a number of years with Azure and like I say, putting those unified comms bits and relay servers. <clears throat> and so I think I got the general gist of what was going on. I understood what classic model was compared to the arm and that transition. So I kind of followed all that through, but I, I never did any of this publicly. Mm. You know, I kind of did this behind the scenes. I was internally speaking with colleagues about it. And, you know, at, at the time the company I worked for, they also offered their managed services offerings and managed compute offerings. So it was a kind of, 
why would we be selling Microsoft services? We've got our own products to sell. It's like, well, because they're probably a bit better, but you can't say that. <laughs> so that's how it went for me. And then eventually that the penny dropped with a lot of people. It's like, right, okay, this this thing, Azure, you know, it's uh it you probably want to take it a little bit more seriously. And and certainly that's the case now with cloud services, as we know. And that's I think that kind of relates back to my point now. I think there's been that enough of that wave of people that are now realizing okay this is this is absolutely an industry changing thing this phenomenon that's been kind of building up over this last decade we're now in yeah. it so which bits do you want to learn i guess for me it's probably been the last 18 months or two years that i found i wouldn't say it's overwhelming to the point that i don't know what to do but every time you look at the cloud you think there's for every one thing I learn, there's another 20 <laughs> things that I probably need to learn yes. or, or I think I might need to learn. And I think it's managing that that I find the trickiest because, you know, like you alluded to, I've if you look at my blog, you'll see I flit between all the shiny things. And this is me just trying to learn about all the different areas, you know, look at IoT, look at Edge. And again, that journey has been really good fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I still not finished. There's still those I want to do there. But I'm trying to branch into the AI side now. I did the AI fundamentals mm. uh, exam a, uh, a good few months ago, and I thought, mm, I want to get into the AI, the you know learning more. So I'm my last blog post was just me trying to go through some of the early learnings of that. So that's the way I see things going, and, and eventually I will get back around to doing some data services as well. So um, yeah, so it, it's it is overwhelming, but I think you it depends what you want to get out of it. It's probably my experience, and for somebody like me. I want I want to learn as much as possible, um, knowing full well that nobody is ever going to know everything about Azure. I just want to be in the position where I've at least experienced the edges of stuff that I may never use, but at least I've got one little thing that I've done with it, yeah. you know, that I can kind of hook into and then build my knowledge off of that if I need to. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, it's it's it is overwhelming, but I think you just got to pin your mark on right. Are you learning this to do your day job? Are you learning it to do a particular customer project or are you learning it just for the fact that you want to learn it you know so just put your peg in the ground and and, and work out what do you want to look absolutely. at absolutely and as much as there absolutely. is absolutely and you mentioned earlier about mentoring and coaching and that's something i do in the day job as well with some of our earlier in career folks mm. and uh one of the pieces of guidance I typically give to them is you know if you've got an interest area or a subject area or something you already know great start there um or if you don't you know find something that really interests you and kind of pulls you in and start there but you don't necessarily need to go kind of scattergun of oh there's kind of this service over here and oh I probably need to learn that thing mm. you can naturally start expanding and growing over time and looking at yeah. you know like mm. you said with IoT IoT AI ML data services then go into mm -hmm. like integration and gradually start bubbling out and expanding out and then you kind of naturally growing those skills rather than finding that overwhelming feeling so you know sounds very similar to what you're yeah. doing there so wanted to pull that bit out oh definitely yeah i think it's just interesting as well the concept of you know i say to people i'm i, I always say to people i'm a traditional operations person so i generally tend to deal with you know more the business side mm -hmm. of things and fitting the it solution around those requirements you know and kind of feeding and watering and helping manage services, keep the lights on and keep the, the, the services up and running. So that's traditionally been the the bulk of my kind of career in IT. Mm. But, you know, over the years, I, I've dabbled in the other areas. I, I'm by no means developer, but I, I you know, I, I know enough code to be dangerous, you know, <laughs> to, and, and try, try and throw something together. And, and, and you know what, it's, it's one of those things where there was a point in time where I did develop. I did do a bit of development work, and and I did it for probably about eighteen months uh, early on in my IT career, and I and I absolutely loved it because of the 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 kind of the feeling of I've just created something that has made somebody go, my goodness, how that how, how did you do that? You know, how did you make that happen? It's like, well, I don't know myself to be honest. I googled <laughs> a lot, well, <laughs> and put it all together. Yeah. But you know, I, I I I look back at those kind of those times where I was doing that kind of work. And, and I really did get a lot of job satisfaction from it. And a lot of, it, it lets you kind of work with your creative skills more. Whereas I think traditionally IT is very much logical. And I think we're in this world now, especially with cloud computing that, you know, I, I, I don't know, I watched something a while back, you know, about the left, right side of your brain. You've got your creative side, you've got your logical mathematical side. 
and I genuinely believe, like, like you know, you've got pictures behind you, Chris, of, of you know, sort of West End shows. I got musical equipment by there. So I truly believe it's that kind of person that's got that creative element to them, but has also got that logical side kind of and methodical way of working. You mash those two worlds together and that's what a cloud platform is. That's almost like your stage. You've got a cloud platform with all of these things, this kit bag of stuff, go and do something that nobody else is doing. And for me, that's what makes it exciting because until I understand what each of these components are, you know, I'll sit back, you know, having a cup of tea one night and I'll go, hmm, maybe you could do this, that and the other. And and, and I think that's the point. Yeah, that's what I believe businesses are looking yep. for now is those kinds of people that are able to kind of <clears throat> not just erratically pull on all these different kind of things and say, right, I've given you this little point solution there, but help join the dots between those different services and be creative. Yeah. And and that's why I think I get, I've got my passion back now because I can see that for me, the cloud platform is that, you know, for a cliche way of framing it, a, a stage that you can now go and perform in, you know, and, but you just kind of, you need to know how to dance. You need to know how to sing. You probably need to know an instrument. And these are all your cloud skills <laughs> yeah. that, you're picking up. So the more you can do, you know, maybe, maybe I'll be the Bruce Forsyth of uh, cloud platforms. I don't know. <laughs> higher or lower, higher or lower. There we go. Um, yeah, higher or lower than a five. <laughs> but uh, again, there's so much in there to uh, to kind of pull out, but agree. And I like the analogy of kind of the stage with the cloud platform. Um, mm. Yeah, lo- lots in there, lots in there. I told you I could wrap them. Didn't <laughs> no, I? no, 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 no. It's it's good. It's good. I'm just thinking where to take us next from that. Um, but this is the point where my mind has gone blank, so we'll move swiftly on. Um, no, actually, there was one point in there. I, I will jump back to one thing, um, which was about you know kind of solving business problems. That's why we're in IT, right? Because ultimately, tech is great, but it needs to kind of solve some kind of problem and some kind of solution. I'm on the cloud with Chris side, I was telling. But the point we're filming this is just after uh, the session I had with Carl. Um, and I was telling Carl yeah. about uh, the integration platform I've been building for Cloud with Chris. The first one did the job. It was fine. It got what it needed to do done in terms of my social media posts, etc. But it didn't really mm-hmm. scale as much as I wanted it to. It didn't go to the... It wasn't expandable. It wasn't easy to integrate brand new platforms onto it for social posts, etc. Um, so I went back to the drawing board. Long story short, that's been the weekend uh, for my my uh, yeah. past weekend is building up that new platform, and now I'm much more happy with it in terms of it's going to give me that future proof kind of scenario. And I think to the point where you mentioned yeah. there about point solution versus that creative piece, couldn't agree more. And I think mm. there's always a time where a point you mentioned earlier, requirements always come into it. The point solution might be the right thing for a certain point of time, mm. and that's okay. Absolutely. But the beauty of the cloud, and this is something I just take for granted, I'm sure you take for granted as well, is actually we haven't invested hundreds of thousands in terms of this infrastructure or this solution in advance. Yes, there's the design time and all of the effort of building the thing, but with things like infrastructure as codes and automation and all these other things now, actually that overhead is getting lower and lower and we can just go you know what we need to actually revamp that platform now we need to make the v2 or you know the v next or however you want to code it yeah um, absolutely yeah, and, and yeah. go on to that and i think that's what i'm seeing a lot more as well it's just that continuous evolution and continuous improvement of things and that's what i was going to say you, you hit the nail on the head there i think with cloud especially when you look at all the the free services or or at least the really low cost services the, those barriers to entry to actually spin some of this stuff this stuff up have a play you know do that little bit is 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 there you can you can virtually do it especially if you work for a partner or you know you, you're fortunate enough to have one of the um uh, msdn the what they call now the visual studio yeah, MS, subscription, uh, visual studio subscription got, that's it you know, you know so so if, you, if you're in that position or you're working for a company and and they've got those to hand well, you know, you, you don't even you, you're not paying any money for these things. You literally spin them up. You might be able to run them for a few hours, a few days, maybe even a few weeks, turn things off. You know, save your, your credits, all that good stuff. But at least you can have a Absolutely. go. And 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 to be honest, Chris, I think one one of the things I always trip myself upon when I speak like this, because you know, is that 
yes, it's about that evangelizing the art of the possible and that creative side and that getting on with stuff. But I always obviously fall back to my operational side and then realize that, look, as much as we can all go off and do this this development work in in an operation sense, is, is yeah, that I'm such a you. thing? I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, it's to do to do this work, you still need to be able to put this into production. And as much as we may spend time and effort doing this fantastic thing and yeah it, it's like your mvp a minimal viable product that you've done to do something some automation would you trust that in production so you've got to appreciate that you you know it's that balance absolutely it? it's the balance of being able to kind of crack on and do all these innovative innovative things and really you know change the world so to speak but do it with a little bit of a rain on you to make sure you're not you know doing something silly with security or governance or you know you're not really you know <laughs> getting yourself the, your p45 in the post <laughs> the next week you know so you you it's, it's, it's it, i find it's sometimes for, for as much passion as i know that i've got to do things sometimes you've got to realize hang on a second you've got to try and rein it back and it's just it's finding that balance and like you say if there's a point solution or a, or already developed solution or a, you know an off-the-shelf product that will fit that business requirement absolutely you know that's what you do um if if that particular project or that customer allows you that time they want something uh, different or developed or just literally want to do some proof of concept kind of work the cloud is such a great place to start doing that because those barriers to entry are either non-existent or really cheap you know so that, that's what i mean and for me that's the passion and that's the way things are going and, and really it's the excitement as to where are we going to be working in the next five years is what motivates me to keep learning and keep playing and testing and working with great customers awesome. you know oh excellent and on that point then what you know what's coming in the next five years um we obviously had microsoft build very recently um, lots of great announcements there what what are some of the things which are top of mind for you that particularly excited you and you thought that's something that i need to get on my list to start learning soon right so you, you've got another hour hours worth of recording <laughs> here, Chris. Yeah. here we go <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, well, look, I'll I'll try and hold the passion back here now a little bit. Now, for me, um, I mean, to, to cut through all the, the passionate bit, it's it's IoT, it's data, AI, machine learning. That's where we're going to be in the next five to ten years in pretty much everything and anything we do. That's my big bet, and I, I think it's a fair to say it's probably a, a solid bet based on what you can see coming out yep. of things like Build and certainly Ignite. Only a few few months weeks months back now i guess isn't it yes <laughs> um you look at things like mesh you know that's yeah. next step now with vr uh the way they're going with the communications clients hololens and that augmented reality thing um you hook that into things like iot and iot sensors you know i've been playing with object detection object recognition mm -hmm. and and using things like you know i've got on my desk here that little jetson nano sort of hardware accelerated gpu powered device you're running really powerful object detection ai models on a on a computer that's you know the size of my hand yeah. and you think right okay so where where could i put these devices could i run them off of lithium batteries could i put a bunch of sensors a bunch of cameras these things could be anywhere literally anywhere with the power of things like 5g you know i work for hello you know bt and ee in the uk with 5g technologies hooking into things like edge devices all of a sudden you've unlocked that things the, the ot of things and then you put that internet thing before it where you've got 5g you know ubiquitous I, I, um, 5g and all of a sudden you've got this you know and this is it for me you can we were already seeing sensors everywhere we walk and talk at the moment we're seeing cameras everywhere things are tracking us on our phones in our cars wherever we go we're already surrounded by this technology today and i can't see that doing anything but accelerating uh over the next few years i think there will be sensors monitoring everything <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you name it there will be something and that data has got to go somewhere yeah that that data has got to be streamed somewhere it's got to be processed streamed stored analyzed transformed decisions and insights need to be gleaned from it and then businesses make different decisions so you know not taking the moral aspect or the sure. moral ground looking at it purely from a techno technology standpoint <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of iot sensors out there there's going to be a lot of networking requirements out there and the cloud is our power station that is basically doing all this number crunching and 
insights uh, displaying or, or whatever, however we want to do it. You know, you look at the power platform and the great things that you can do with that side of things with displaying these results and getting those insights from whatever it is that you're doing. That really kind of has, has filled a passion for me because, <laughs> again, you're back to what can we do with all this technology? And, and I think um, I was speaking, I forget I was speaking to the other day, but we were talking around IoT solutions and and really you know if 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 there was no barrier what would you do with sensors and it kit what could you do and one of the the suggestions that was made and this was a true life thing i think i watched it uh, at nvidia the um the gtc conference they had a few weeks back but it just it became so obvious it's like oh, of course but they had these little you know sort of edge powered devices with some uh, ml objects detection stuff on them little microphone they were putting them up in trees in uh, in you know sort of forest areas that obviously deforest de deforestization zones so it's illegal to chop the, tree, the trees down basically and they were putting these devices up there and if these devices detected the sound of chainsaws then they would obviously send an alert to a marshal or a sheriff or somebody that would get in his car and go out and patrol that area where the detection was and they'd even train these devices to know if the 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 sound of chainsaw um, was cutting through trees, you know, wow. so you get that sound where yeah, oh, yeah. you know, or it would detect the sound of cars. So the sheriff could get the insights of if he can hear cars going to or coming from, he knows they're probably not in the process of chopping the trees down. So he could probably just drive there and shoo them away, so to speak. If they hear the sound of chainsaws cutting through trees, some of these people are quite hostile. So he knows he's got to go there with precaution or maybe a team of people have got to go there. And you just think, yeah, they're the kinds of insights that, you know, how do you manipulate yeah. um, data to give you that? And, and, and for me, that's the creative side. And all of a sudden we've got this world that's opened up to us. How do we take anything and get glean insights? And for me, like I say, that's the most exciting part. And that's the, the part of growth within, you know, well, five years to 10 years time. I think that's where we'll be talking a lot about. Um, so, yeah, for me, this is me dipping my toe in the water before I retire to learn as much as I can that will hopefully see me through to retirement dealing with some of this great technology in the future. Gotcha. Yeah, awesome summary. And I think for anyone who's listening in and thinking, hold on, we've got all these sensors, we've got all the things of the of things part there. Why now? Why is it suddenly taking off? And I think to your point right cloud it's not just about the things mm. like yeah we've got things so what they collect data they collect videos images they transmit things so what it's then that intelligence and that uh, reasoning over all of that data coming in where you start getting insights mm. like i was watching the uh, worldwide developer conference for apple yesterday and there were some interesting things coming up from there that they're looking to do with health data and how you can go and start um, almost being yeah. proactive on health data that's coming in and again a similar scenario but um, i think one of the things going back to your summary and commentary from my side which i think is interesting again from the build side but also you see in the iot space is this idea of being able to run things anywhere so Containers, obviously, a big mm -hmm, part yeah. of that. Um, you've now got cloud native applications anywhere because of Azure Arc. Yeah. So being able to run your app services, your functions, your event grid, all of that kind of stuff on a Kubernetes cluster. So feasibly, yeah. if you had your IoT devices connected up to um, a 5G network or wherever they're connected and you've got a Kubernetes cluster on site, but you don't want to go quite to the cloud because of latency or whatever reasons, You've got options. Mm -hmm. You can go and do the processing on the IoT device itself because if you've got IoT mm -hmm. Edge or something like that, you can run containers on there. Um, you could then go ahead maybe have a more local deployment if you just want to keep the latency low-ish, um, but you still want to have some kind of central processing being done in your environment. Or you go the full shebang and then send it out to the cloud and have your deployment in the cloud go and deal with that. And I think that's what I see is this ubiquitous way of being able to go and deploy things now starting to emerge as well um of course absolutely we've got the devices we've got the data that we're capturing but i think the what we're doing with it then is the really important bit and the fact that we see this mm -hmm. way of being able to almost do this anywhere being able to bring some of that investment that's gone into the cloud and bring it to the on-premises bring it to the devices themselves i just think is 
amazing. <laughs> and, you know, like you say, well, what is coming no, next absolutely. in the next five years? No, well, it's like you say, you know, even running containers on a on an IoT Edge device, you know, we know that that's how IoT Edge is. It's a, basically, it's a pseudo, um, you know, mini Kubernetes K3s, I yeah. guess, something like that. It's, it's a little mini, oh, yeah, container orchestrator. Mm. And to your point about the services that we can now run from Azure straight into a container, you know, I'm running stream analytics jobs. So I've, rather than running a stream analytics job in, in the cloud, so like you say, streaming all of that data. Now, all of that data that this sensor might be gathering we, it is great. We might not need all of it. You know, we might want, like you say, do some of that processing on the device itself. So, you know, ship that container onto the device, let that container take those messages and do with what you will. And and, and I think it's pretty cool what Microsoft have done. You know, if you take things like stream analytics is literally yep. looking at all of this flood of data that's coming from a device and, you know, using SQL like syntax, just strip that away and then maybe send a message up once every 15 or 30 seconds, whatever you need to do, that is a kind of aggregation of all of those results that's been processed on yeah. the edge. And it's it, and, and for me, even talking about these now, I'm sure there'll be people watching going, yeah, yeah, either it's gone way over my head or I don't know what a stream analytics job is or, you know, I don't know how to write SQL. For me, this is the problem that we're all in at the moment because You'll have one person that will be absolutely fantastic at that, one person this. And, yes. you know, for me, it's about trying to join these dots up mm -hmm. to say, right, you need to kind of have a good SQL knowledge, bit of SQL knowledge to do this bit. Um, you need to know how containers work and operate, you know, how to clear logs down on a container and how to, you know, things like that, because these devices are, are low powered, low memory. You know, you don't want to just go and chuck a big, you know, sort of four or <laughs> five hundred meg image on the thing yeah. and fill the, the SD, you know, it's all of these things are the learnings that you kind of have to go through. And and for me, that's what I found exciting because all of a sudden now, because there is so much you can do, it's like, you know, you learn about these very intricate things, which, you know, any dev would probably go, yeah, that's my daily life. And, <laughs> and, and I get that. But at the same time, it's it's for me, it's not good enough just knowing how to do one thing in in a deep level of detail i think you need to bring yourself That's out he. and at least try and broaden yeah. yeah broaden those horizons a bit so but yeah there's some cool cool stuff going on at the moment and yeah for me it's just like it's gone from those traditional days of we've got an application that needs to be installed or upgraded to now you can do whatever it is that you want to Absolutely. do you know i i think uh the the, the dev time that i talked to you about earlier uh, whenever anybody would come up and, you know, feature uh, where they wanted some features added or whatever, they'd say, well, what can I do? And my, my stop line was, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. You know, if you wanted to, you know, make a cup of tea, we, we could do that. <laughs> but, you know, you know, I'm guessing you don't want it to make a cup of tea. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's really trying to ignite that passion and getting people to realize, hang on a minute. For, well, for me anyway, it's about having that breadth of knowledge, being able to join the dots, use your creative brain a bit to think of these solutions and that's when we're going to develop and move into the next um phase of this wonderful cloud thing that we're in at the moment i absolutely. think absolutely and i think the message i'm hearing in there as well is almost a better together message because yes we can get our broad knowledge but you know you have your subject matter areas i have mine and i think once mm -hmm. we can come together and appreciate that actually we've got this breadth of knowledge we've each got our areas and can go deep that's how we then make almost this symphony here we go we're bringing the analogies we've got an orchestra here and uh, we've got the Absolutely. symphony coming together so excellent so final question then um uh, before we wrap up here so yeah if you started all again and you had to give yourself the words of wisdom you know you were gonna start learning clouds and maybe your top three tips of here's what you need to do john what would they be Ooh, yeah good question i think well, I said one earlier, I think if somebody gave me the advice 20 years ago, do your learnings in a public forum, that would be number one, because you're not only helping yourself to learn by doing that thing on a blog article or a YouTube or speaking to somebody on Twitter without you realizing you're also helping other people. Yeah. And, you know, not one person is the font of knowledge. Whatever you think is not decent information or you you don't rate as, you know, it's something you've done day in, day out to somebody else. That is the key bit of information that they're missing on their journey. So 
you learn in a public forum. That's my number one. If somebody told me that 20 years ago, I'm sure my career would have gone in a different direction to, to what it has done. And then in a, in a positive way is, is what I mean there. Um, I think number two, you've got to be passionate. I think you've got to be one of those kinds of people, especially with technology. And, and it kind of plays, I, I again, generalist statement, but I think the majority of people that work in tech are inquisitive by nature and have got this problem solving ability. You, you kind of need to have that to work in tech. I think, you know, to be a, a techie, I, I, I will probably get shot down in flames for that. But generally, I think that that's the general feeling that you need to have that kind of inquisitive nature and you've got to be passionate about something. You've got to find the passion. Um, but if you don't, I think you'll just get bored too easily. Because look, let's face it, not everything in IT has got flashing lights on it and is interesting. There is a lot of boring, mundane yep. stuff that you kind of have to read if you want to know it detail, you know, the, you know, the details. So you've got to be passionate. And number three, ooh, I haven't thought, right? Number three, let me think. Uh, I, I, I would say it kind of couples in with number one. I think you've got to be you on, on your journey. You've got to do what... Um, you feel is right for you and what you feel is the direction of where things are going because you're offering insights you're offering your own perspective on things so i think how can i frame that in a better way but yeah maybe just do what you feel you need to do because the platform that's out there at the moment is so huge and vast that there is room for everybody yeah. you know what i mean there is certainly room for everybody to have their own unique take Absolutely. on it and there's not one thing is there's no such thing as a de facto product anymore. You know, it used to be the case that, you know, killer apps, de facto um, de, de facto products used to used to rise to the top. I, I don't feel we're there anymore. I think if there's room, well, you see it with dev, you see the different dev tools, the different coding languages, the different platforms mm -hmm. we all use. There's, there's, there's room for everybody to play. So you do with what you feel you need to do, everything that suits you and, and you feel comfortable using or learning about and just get on and do it but use that passion and do it in a public forum there we, there go. we go that'll wrap up the, <laughs> nicely the encapsulated question. so folks before we wrap up just another call out as well um i've got it on screen once again for anyone listening in i can assure you i've got it on screen is um john's website here so johnnychips.com also johnny chips on youtube and twitter as well um please follow please subscribe because uh, as you can see just from this one hour alone plenty of insights here and uh, much more that you can go and discover on his blog on his youtube channel and uh, just by interacting with him as a human on twitter as we discussed earlier on so john thank you so much for joining today really really great discussion and uh, pleased to have you on the show not at all chris thanks for having me on it's been a pleasure matey and um, i'll catch you soon excellent thanks john So there we go, folks. Uh, that time flew by and I wish we could have another hour because there is so much more in there that I'm sure we could unpack. But a brilliant story from John there about his own journey, some of the things that he wished he knew at the very beginning that he's picked up along the way and sharing his insights really on what's to come. And I agree, I think there's plenty more to come in the cloud world as well. So you know what to do if you've liked this episode please go ahead hit the like button hit the subscribe button as well and the notification bell so you know as soon as there's brand new content that you can go and watch on youtube but it's not all about youtube there's apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify and cloudwithchris.com where you can listen to the audio and read the transcript at the same time or read a blog while you're there because there's plenty of blogs on the website that you can read as well and there's other great content creators out there as well john is one of them I'm one of them. There are plenty, plenty others. Please do go and support, whether that is content creators on the web or whether that is your local Azure user group looking for presenters or people to help facilitate because people are always looking for support. So with that, folks, stay safe, stay healthy. And until the next episode, thank you for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>